All right, what is up? Well, Hello. it's it's not it's not Monday, it's Tuesday. Yeah. Welcome to TRS Live. I almost said Trigger Talk, Zach, because we just got done doing Trigger Talk, what, a few hours ago? Is this already the sequel for Trigger Talk? It could be. It could <laughs> be. Today. Is it Tuesday at 9 already? All right. Well, cool, everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in to uh, TRS Live. I'm obviously joined with, by Zach. Do you have a camera on you this time around, or are you just I a voice? I don't, but I'll just, just, a voice a, I'll just be God. a voice. Disembodied it, voice. The wizard behind it, the, the curtain. It, it, yeah. <laughs> And that voice right there is a new guy to the uh, to the show here. This is Mike. Mike handles pretty much everything on the floor, right, dog? Yeah, I can handle pretty much anything that's out there. You can handle it. I, you can. He'll he'll come in here and he'll tell you. So I have to uh, before we get into. So today we want to talk about ATA show that just wrapped up over the weekend. But uh, a customer of the Real Shot sent me a message over the weekend. Said he came in here to shoot a bow. His name is Jesse. He's a really good guy. And he goes, I didn't recognize the guy behind the counter. So he goes, I didn't, I did, I'm pretty particular who I work with. I go, was he a short guy with a beard or what? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's Mike. So he's a good dude. Just go in there and we'll start ripping on him right away. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're going to be best friends and he's going to take care of you. Like, <laughs> I know he's going to. He goes, all right. All right. I actually had some different words. I told him that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I told did. him to call you a really nice guy and then say you'll never shoot a deer with a G5 <laughs> broadhead because I'm going to win it. I'm going to win the contest. No way, no That's way. We got it. me and Matt got the spot lined up. So, so let's uh, let's introduce you here, Mike, to the people that are watching the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your hobbies. Hobbies, uh, hunting fish. I mean, do I do it all? Big walleye guy. So. I prefer trying to bring that to the store. You got too many bass guys. There's in a lot of store. bass guys around here. Yep, ripping in those two pounders and stuff. So. For uh, for walleye, <laughs> are you uh, all like trolling, casting. I, I hate trolling. I actually hate trolling. We so. just became best friends. I know, right? Just you want to go do grotty in the garage? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, but cool. Right now, Eggers kind of got you behind the archery counter. Right? Yeah, just getting back into it. I, I ran archery for a long time at a couple different stores and shops and stuff, and kind of got out of it now getting back into it so yeah just getting back on that horse and and running with it right it and so but you say you're a walleye guy but you also do a lot of duck hunt waterfall oh yeah right? waterfall is my passion for sure yeah because you really don't even deer hunt rarely rarely I, mean, I get out a couple times a year and just put meat in the freezer that's all it is right you know right my past is chasing ducks and geese so how many how many ducks and geese did you shoot this season uh, too many yeah. we don't let the deer know about <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. So, obviously, when you come into the store and you see Mike around here, he's a really great guy. If you have any questions for him, you know, he can answer pretty much everything. At least he tells me he can. So, oh, yeah. you know, I always tell people to put him to the test, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. All right. Well, obviously, like we were talking about in the intro, ATA show just wrapped up. Zach and I were, had, were grounded this year. We couldn't go to the ATA show. I was kind of bummed. Like, I was going through withdrawals watching it on oh, yeah? social media. Yeah. It's a fun time. It is. Yeah, it is. It's been a few years since I've been down there, but yeah, it's always a good time down there. You know, you get to see the, the celebrities that everybody gets all excited about. And the cool thing is, is obviously what we're talking about today, all the brand new products. So um, before we really start talking about some of our favorites that we just seen via social media this year, obviously, because we are stuck here, you know, let us know what you were, you know, what some products are that you think some big, there was pretty big announcements as far as like pro staff guys, you know, yeah. you know, mainstream guys and gals moving to companies and all yeah, that kind of guys, stuff. Yeah. A couple guys left Hoyt and yeah. Well, and let's, let's like talk about it right away. Cause the first thing we're going to roll into are some of the bows that are brand new for 29 or 2020, almost said 2019. Right. You know, obviously one of the ones that I follow him, I'm think you follow him is John yeah. Dudley. Correct. He jumped ship. Well, not even jump ship. His contract ran out with Hoyt. He is now with PSE. Yeah. He came out with his own bow, which is cool. I was always surprised that Hoyt didn't give him his own bow. Yeah, I was kind of surprised, too, with that. I mean, the guys, I mean, he put his time in with them, and I, maybe that was part of his decision-making. I, I don't know. Not right. Put words in his mouth. Or anything, yeah, we don't know. We don't know the in intimate details. But, but when you see guys jump ship like that, you kind of kind of wonder what's going on in the backside. Right. Yeah. Know? Like, yeah, I'm sure he, well, he's a, obviously, he's he's an international archer. He's he's a big on education. If you haven't seen any of his social media stuff, it's, you know, it's knock on archery. Correct. So, uh, he, so much education. The guy forgets more things than I even want to. Oh, for sure. You know, Same can, here. I mix two of us. 
So that's pretty cool for that. Now, I don't know if Edgar has plans of bringing PSC back to the shop because of that kind of stuff, but we have some phenomenal bows here. Oh, for sure. That we did, can just roll right into. So let's just, we just talked about the Hoyt. Obviously, you know, these aren't weren't released at ATA show, but, like, Hoyt's got, what, like five different bows now? Yeah, I think four or five, yeah. So, like, in my hand right now is the uh, Redworks. This is the four. Uh, Redworks 4, so this is the smaller axle axle. This is 29, I think. I believe so, yeah. Yep. Carbon riser, and they have this in aluminum as well. Then they have a bunch of different bows spread throughout that lineup. So, obviously, if you're looking for something to shoot, stop down here if you're a Hoyt guy. Now, I shot a Hoyt last year. I really enjoyed it. And the thing that, as I'm moving into a different bow this year, I'm going to miss the weight. The yeah, I mean, the weight's nice, but, I mean, you get to a point – when, when it comes to balance, you're going to end up putting a bunch of stuff on it to get back to what's comfortable for you. Yep. What you've used, you know, used to shooting. Correct. You know? Yep. It, so, I mean, I guess when a guy's talking to you about weight on bows, I, I say the same thing. I say, go ahead and buy a light bow. You're going to end up putting a bunch of stuff on to get what's get yourself back to what's comfortable shooting. Yeah, and what you meant by that is you meant stabilization. Stabilization, Front stuff bar, like that. back yep. bar, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. different weights here and there on it, yeah. Yep, so the the weight and then obviously the carbon is warm to the touch. Correct. And even picking up some of the aluminum bows that we have in front of us, you know, their their handles are cold and everything. Yeah, like even that. at room temperature, it's a it's yes. day difference. Yep. yep, but, you know, so we have the – we have a pretty much every Hoyt that they have right now. I right? believe so, yeah. Through the hunting lineups. Correct. Aluminum and carbons. Correct. And then, uh, obviously, the primes. We like our primes here at the Real Shot. We got the black series. They got We got the black one, three, and five in stock. Correct. This one looks pretty wicked. I, that's a cool color. I like that. Uh, uh, the short axle axle is nice. It's 31, but it doesn't feel like a 31. Yep. Yep. So, and then, you know, Prime had some uh, major adjustments this year to their bows. Uh, modular system now to their cams. Correct. They added a split yoke system on a you know a floating yoke you could call it. They Correct. already had something similar to that, but they just made subtle changes to that. So it's almost like this bow has a double yoke. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is is the modular system as opposed to having to yep. order cams all the time for guys draw weights and lengths and stuff like that. And the so. cool thing about Prime is still the only company in the industry that I'm aware of that offers new strings and cables. Every two years. Every two years. Correct. Once you register the bow through them. Yep. So, you know, obviously, if you're looking for a new bow, don't leave the primes out of that one. They are they are shoot really well. They hold really well with the moving the grip up, adding the swerve and everything. Very well balanced. So, you know, we, we like the primes here at the Real Shot, just like we like all the bows. Oh, the one thing, too, is we're going to talk about the QADs, but even uh, Hoyt now has an integrate integrated system. Correct. Yep. Just like Matthews did last year, so the the new QAD that they released this year will get dovetail system right to the back of the riser for a better connection. You know, made more for the risers of those two particular oh, yeah. bows. Much easier to square up and everything. Have you been setting up quite a few of those? Yeah, yeah, we set up a few so far this year. And uh, it, is it that much faster? I haven't set up a QAD in a. I mean, weeks. it's quicker getting it square to the bow, yep. you know, versus having to put it on, level it, and all that stuff. I mean, it's a dovetail, so I mean, right. If it's not square, it's it's not square from the factory. It's not square from the factory. Yep. And then uh, obviously the one that's been blowing out of here, Mike. Why don't you talk to everybody about the, uh, uh, the new Matthews VXR? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they they stayed with the same switch mod system that, that they came out with last year. Uh, what they did is they lengthened the riser. I want to say like a full inch, inch and a half on the 28 and a half. Uh, the 31 or the 28, the 31 and a half they have is probably the most parallel limbo they've ever made before. Um, again, length of the riser, same switch mod system, but yep. the 28 inch bow, it doesn't feel like a 28. It feels more like a, like a 33, 34 when you're shooting. It handles real well. Yep. So. And then they also, to their bows, they added that, uh, that quick connect system. That's there. actually an option. It's, it's not added to it. It's, True. it's, it's an option that's add on for pulling up into the tree stuff like that or adding a sling to it adding so, a sling to it yep. correct yep yeah so we have both those the 28 and the 31 and a half inch here yeah we got a bunch of each again switch mate mod system so i mean you got, you got anybody who wants to come in i mean it takes two seconds to swap out the mods for different draw weights and draw lengths so, so the bow itself is a what like a 60 to 70 pounder and then just by 60 switch? to 70 yeah and then like i said you, you sw we swap out mods the switch, the switch weights they call them for yep. 65 or 60 or whatever you want. So, hmm. I mean, you still want to shoot the bow at, you know, max weight and stuff. So, I'd, instead of buying a 70 and dropping it down to 60, put the 60 mod in with your draw length and you're out the door. Ready to roll. Ready to roll. All right, grab the last one. The uh, best, the best yeah, looking one. That's right. For the year. Yes, I hear is. you there, boys. All right. So, Mike and I are both shooting Bow Tech this year. Yeah. 
and uh, we're both shooting the same exact bow, the Revolt X. This is uh, this is the one that I'm going to be shooting this year. This is in that OD green cam or color scheme. I think it is looks pretty wicked awesome. I love this color. If I didn't, I mean, the web page didn't do it justice if I didn't know the color. This was what it looked like. I this is the one I would have gotten instead of the black yeah. one. Well, it's not too late. Hey, I, I know, you right? You could sell that black when you're shooting. I right could, now. yeah, easily sell it. Yeah. So obviously the Real Voltex, they made some big changes this year. They got rid of the split yokes on the top and the bottom. Correct. No. And then they added this this system here. Yeah, each cam is tied into each other, so it's easy, super easy to tune. Um, you have your, I can't remember what offhand was called, was it the quick lock or something like that? Yeah. And basically what you do is you're going to get your, your rest squared up, vertical and horizontally, and when just loosening these up, the lock, and screwing them in or out. Basically, you're, you're moving the whole string left or right. Yeah. Makes tuning a lot easier, a lot quicker, as opposed to twisting yokes and yep. no press needed. So. Yep. And then they also still have the flip disc system. The flip there. disc, yeah. So you go with the comfort setting or your uh, performance setting. Performance setting, you're going to get that little harder draw cycle in it, uh, the hump and dump, I guess. And uh, you'll get more speed out of it, obviously. But uh, You yeah. don't need it. Well, you, no, what, I'm old. I mean, What's I, the specs on yours? Mine, I got set at 70 pounds. My draw, I actually just moved the draw length down a half an inch, and I left my uh, draw stop out a half inch. It actually holds a lot better than what it was. So I'm shooting 70 pounds. got a little... 25 and a half inch arrows on it but i'm running 295 out of it that's, and that's in comfort mode that's nuts so I mean, that's, I, you could flip that disc over and i could probably get another eight to ten feet out of it maybe a little bit more uh, i had a guy come in the other day with a carbon icon and we flew only a 60 pounder he picked up 20 feet per second difference from flipping just by flipping what yeah. that's insanity with 60 with 60 pounds too what he went from 272 to 293 wow well, there you go. So that's another awesome option by the Botex. I mean, not only the deadlock system for the fine-tune adjustments, but then the fact that you flip that, it's like two bows in one. It is. It is. It's, I mean, if you want just a hunting setup, you know, if you're sitting on stand all day when it's cold out, and yep. I don't I don't want that hard draw. draw so like I want something nice and easy. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't want the hard draw. That's right. <laughs> uh, Brad Fuller wants to mention here, we got a bunch of people tuning in. Any lefties in stock? I got a few in stock, yeah. Um, if not, we can get them ordered. It's not that hard to get them ordered. I know some of the brands. I know, like, Matthews, I know they're, like, 8 to 12 weeks out right now. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But, I mean, it's good. We got we got a ton in stock. I know we do have a few lefties in stock right now in the VXRs I, as far as exactly which ones I have and colors. Right, I'm yeah, not sure, color, color schemes and all that stuff. If you're not that picky, we, you know, we, we yeah, probably we have could, a lefty that can. Yeah, we could fix something out, too. I mean, yep. we've, we've swapped out cams or uh, limbs before to match, get guys set up, but it's not that hard to do. Whatever you want, we'll take care of you. Correct. All right, well, let's roll right into our list. So what you're going to see here is Zach has some um, – some of these are just from – other sites where we could grab stuff. Some are from their main pages, but it was a real another big year for crossbows. It seems like at the ATA show. Yeah, you know, you know what's going to happen. I mean, the crossbow market is is taking off the last few years, especially, um, and now with Raven coming out, and it, I think Raven's forcing everybody to up their game with what they're yeah, what they're, they're doing. Yeah, they're they're unbelievable. So their new bow for this year is the 29X, 450 feet per second. Yeah, they stayed on the the, the 29. Last year's 29, uh, I guess, frame, you call it. They stayed on that and made some modifications with limbs and stuff. Um, yeah, definitely pumping speed out. I know they changed the uh, the draw system, so it's a silent draw now. Yep. Which is nice. You don't have to worry about that click sound and all that, but it's still and super compact. Stu yeah, so it's a 29-inch frame, like you said. The biggest thing they did is they beefed up the limbs and the draw weight to get the extra speed out of it, and they're offering it in a couple different packages. They're offering it in the sniper package, which has the upgraded scope and everything to it. Correct. And then they can, they're still offering it with the, the you know regular, I think it's a Hawk scope that are on. Yeah, the are, Hawk scope. Yep, yep, yep. And then they also, so the 29 is still is still available, and then they're off, also offering the 29, just a regular, not the X version, the 430 feet Correct. per second. Yep version with the sniper package as well yes, yes and yeah. we've carried that sniper package when we had the i think it was the r what 15s or whatever and we sold quite a few of those it's got the uh, the dial arrange single reticle in there and everything like yeah, that yeah. so that was in the jack plate so they call that um we'll, we'll, let's put the crossbows on hold here just answer a quick question trevor wants to know what is the best bowl that came out in 2020 for your opinion for me, personally, I'll say the Revolt X, the, the Bowtech Revolt X. And it, you get the Revolt and Revolt X. So you came out, 
the the short axle axle and the longer axle axle. So, and so Trevor, that's a real good question, but it's an opinion based question. It is. It's it's Ford and Chevy. I, I get guys in here all the time want me to tell them what the best is, and I said you can ask ten different guys, you get ten different answers. Yeah, and so. here at the store, we like to just be non biased because we do carry the best lineups that you possibly can find in one shop, and we just say shoot them all. Correct. Yeah. I'll, with, I'll throw a rest on any one of them. Let you, let these guys shoot them all day long. Yep. Whatever. So what you're, with some things. Let's just let's just go into that a little bit. Some things that I always educate people to pay attention to is obviously like you talked about the draw cycle. Correct. That's you know the overall the how the cam roll over, how it is feels on the back wall, everything like that. Uh, the first then the weight, the physical weight of the bow, not the draw weight, how right. heavy it is in your hand. Um, and then one of the big things that I always tell people to pay attention to is shock. You know, vibration, oh, yeah. tuning fork, vibration through the hand. Yep, correct. You know, all these bowl companies have done a really good job of virtually eliminating that, or it's even more eliminated with a stabilizer put onto it. But, like, you know, I'll be honest, the Matthews is probably the most dead-in-the-hand bowl that we carry in the By shop. By far, yeah. It's it's like shooting nothing. It's like, yeah, there's like nothing in your hand. You shoot it, you don't feel anything. So there's none of that, and then noise is probably the last one, which comes into it comes into play with shock. It does, it does. I mean, if there's shockers, obviously you're moving somewhere, so there's gonna be noise with that as well. So. Yep, yep. And what about you? Got anything else or those? What for if somebody looking? No, I, I just tell I tell everybody to shoot everything. Um, figure out your, we'll figure out what your draw weight if you want to shoot it, and we'll max those bows out at that. I'd, I'd rather not turn a bow down. Yes, because it changes the draw cycle and feels. So. Yep. Yep. I agree, and it's like so. The biggest thing we get is well, what what's your maximum weight? Well, you got to figure that out, and then you have to shoot it as close to that as you can because it'd be like it'd be like buying a Camaro or some hot rod car and driving it at 25 miles an hour. It's yeah. just, it's just a waste a running donuts on it. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like buying a 70 pound bow and shooting it at 60 pounds just doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense at all. Get a 60 no. pound bow, shoot it at the max, which is about a pound or two heavy over draw weight. Correct. And then just roll from there and you're going to get the best performance out of that bow at that time. So then Raven, we kind of covered them. So Ravens were pretty stoked about they do well here. Yeah, we, we we sell a ton of Ravens. It's, it's amazing how many Ravens we sell out of here. Yep, and then now we move into the 10-point lineup. Again, we're talking the crossbows from the uh, 2020 ATA show. They came out with the Viper, or the Vapor, I'm sorry. It's a 470 foot feet per, per second, second crossbow. Reverse limb. Yep, they, uh, they changed their whole system up this year. It was good to see. Uh, we talked about it here at the shop for the last month and a half. I wonder what 10-point was going to do to... I guess get some of that market back that Raven took from them. That's true, and they and they did it. Now you personally have shot and felt. Was it this bull that they brought it here? And you yeah, they brought it? it here a couple of weeks ago. Um, he brought three of them in. I can't remember the names of my fan, but he had uh, yeah three of them. One, I mean, as far as speed wise, they're all within like thirty, forty feet. All three new ones, but. Uh, different platforms lengthwise and stuff like that. Yep. Overall weight and stuff. How Now, for me, the biggest thing is when I had to recommend a crossbow to somebody once Raven hit the market was I love the detachable trigger box. It made the ease of decocking super easy. Yeah, the shuttle system on it. Yeah, 10 point, did, went, they came out with the same thing. Running the shuttle system. And you can actually take that shuttle system off the string once it's once it's decocked. Really? Yeah. Oh, so well, that's different from the Raven. The Raven, you can with the Raven. It's kind of a pain. You got to kind of finagle a bunch of stuff around on the the ten points on the hand. The cranking handle itself, there's a little bar that flips out. You come in from the bottom side through the riser, and basically you're just pushing it up on the uh, the anti dry fire mechanism, and it releases it. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I did, I, that's something I wasn't aware of. Yeah. And the other thing too is this: both this bow, the the ten points, and the Raven. All, we talked about that silent cock. The silent cock. Which was something that was <laughs> <laughs> that's the sneakiest one. Yeah, well, yeah you got to watch out for that one. That's always the sneakiest. When you're uh, walking, we're talking obviously roosters. Yes, you know, yes. chickens, right. chickens, uh, birds. Yeah, presents, when you're yeah. walk when you're walking through the yard, that silent <laughs> just gets you. It's bad news. Uh, Mike, what kind of product do you use on your beard to make it so lustrous? I, actually, I, I make my. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> I actually use. I actually make my own beard oils. Oh, this. yeah. And you have to condition it every day, you know. Probably, yeah, Conditioner right. makes it silky smooth. This one just took a turn, <laughs> like most TRS lines. Exactly. Do. Uh, welcome to beard talk. <laughs> welcome to beard talk. 
Well, so there you That's a really good question, Mr. Eggert. Um, so, anyways. <laughs> so back the, to the 10-point, though. They, they back to the 10-point. The silent cocking. The, exactly. Like we'll say monitor. silent draw. Silent, silent draw. draws. There we go. <laughs> Very useful. But uh, they actually, this year, with their silent draw, they actually have the ability to decock their crossbows as well, too. Which that's was, Which was huge for guys this last year. Yes. Um, we had guys that didn't want to, I guess, spend the money on a, on a Raven until they realized they couldn't decock the 10-point. So, now they're like... Whatever, I guess I got to buy a raven. Then. Gotta bu- now, I wonder, they, they, there's no way that they can make, like the accu draw, you could always add it to a 10 point. Correct. I don't, there's probably no way. I don't could. think there is. I haven't seen anything yet. Right. But, uh, yeah, I can't imagine an add on. Not a, yeah. It's but, a, their, but their decock system and their cocking system is actually pretty nice this year. Um, there's no button to push like the raven. Basically, you put the handle on and crank it, and you can just stop it. And wherever you stop, it'll it'll stand there. Right. Even mm-hmm. on a decock, you don't you don't have to fight it and hold it. And if it slips, you don't have to rip a bust on a knuckle or something. That's nice. You turn it, crank it backwards, let go, and it just stays there. Yep. Now, obviously, with all these advanced features, come advanced pricing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Correct. And, and then so. If you are if you are looking for one of these brand new crossbows on the market, be ready to swallow the pill of twenty six hundred dollars plus. Easily. Yeah, yeah. I think that new vapor is going for three, three grand. I think the new Raven the X is three grand too. The sniper package. Yeah, with the sniper package. Yeah. Yep. So and obviously like to help cut with the costs on some of this stuff, the things that you get with the bow may is going to reflect the price. Like I know like if you're on the ten point website like we're showing you right now. They're even throwing in so many bolts, a case. You know, they're really making it so your value for the what you're paying yeah, for. Yeah, correct. It's not like you're just it's not you're paying three grand just for a crossbow. Right. You're getting all the accessories. You're getting everything. Yep. I think Ten Point's giving you what twelve bolts. I think. Is it really? Yeah. Man, yeah. No? Jeez. I want to say they were six of them were lighted. Possibly. I can't remember off hand. I can't. How, how are we supposed to sell these people more bolts? Yeah. This, yeah right. <laughs> sell them all on. my accessories, and I can't because they come with everything. <laughs> yeah, now. They come with everything. <laughs> Zero add on. We're gonna have to have a talk with our ten point rep. <laughs> exactly. So then, but on the flip flip side, if everybody loves that same ten point name, but the, you know don't like the price point that comes with it, the Wicked Ridge, the M three seventy now. So now you're getting that the the mid grade bow. Correct. At a affordable price, like I think that one's introductory price is at just under seven hundred bucks, six sixty nine or something yeah, like about that. The, the, yeah, they're staying with the, about the same pricing they did last year. Obviously, it's gonna go up a little bit. Yep. But, uh, and you can see the speeds are up there. The foot pounds, kinetic energy, more compact. You know, doesn't have the 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 silent draw system or the or I'm not sorry. It doesn't have the detachable trigger box. Correct. Like the, the upgraded Correct. It's still running the same system. Yep, just the Acu, the Acu Pro, you know, with all that kind of features. But, you know, there the nice thing was is there were, as we go through this list, there were some other crossbows that were introduced or, you know, were retweaked this year that are more at affordable prices. You know, there's quite a few that are still hovering around that $1,500 price range, yeah. which is where a lot of people are going to want to be at versus being at $3,000. But... It's really easy. Somebody summed it up for me really nice. Say if you buy nice or buy twice. So it up depends on what you can afford. And I just say buy once, cry once. That's what I tell these guys. Yeah, that's you true. Know. Like that one too. Yeah, put that <laughs> on the T-shirt and wear it around town. <laughs> All right. So then uh, the next one, Zach. Let's bring up the Carbon Express Axe. So uh, Carbon Express has been in the crossbow game for a while. Now they're jumping on ship with. You know, the the ability to decock, you know, reverse limb, all that kind of stuff. Compact, fast. I don't know what that axe shot. That thing was oh four oh five. I'm guessing. Yeah, four oh five. It's running. It looks like it's running the same, almost the same setup as like a Raven, as far as the bolt being free floated. And I I tried to watch some videos on this one. I couldn't. I couldn't personally find it. I didn't either. I was trying to look too, and I couldn't. Unless someone else has got a link that we couldn't find. Right. I was. I was more curious about what their rail system is like. So obviously, Ten Point still has a rail. Raven does not have a rail. I was kind of curious in what this rail system looked like. Ten Point did though switch up their rail. They actually lowered it. So you're actually getting 60, I want to say 60% less string contact oh, perfect. on the rail. Nice. Zach, I forgot that we're on YouTube. Are you monitoring YouTube as well? Uh, I can be. Okay, thank you. I've just I've been sleeping on the job while we're here. So focused on Mike's lustrous beard that <laughs> I forgot all about it. Okay, uh, so then, you know, so obviously the, uh, the Carbon Express, cross poles are just obviously flooding ATA show this year. Yeah. Mission released two new bows with the Sub-1 XR, and then they also have the Sub-1 Lite. You know, a couple of differences there. 
speed wise, they're not a speed freak. No, they're not. Uh, I mean, they're they're nice to shoot because you don't have that speed. You don't have that big giant hand shock in them and stuff like that. Yep. So they're a little more forgiving to shoot. Which is yeah, which is also going to be more accuracy probably in the long run for you. Less noise as well. Less noise. I did. I can say this. I did shoot a deer this year with the mission, and it was super quiet. Was it not quiet? Super quiet. It was super enjoyable. So I. I uh, shot my first deer with a crossbow this year, and I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, what, what, is it going to be my premier way of hunting? Probably not. No, but it's nice to have that extra tool in the bag. Yep. You know what I mean? I tell guys all the time, you know, you get some guys that want to argue with me about crossbows. Oh, that's cheating and all that. Right. I just look at it as another tool. I right. mean, growing up, I, I mean, back in the day, my dad had a crossbow, and he wanted it as well. You get those late season where you're sitting on stand for five hours and it's six degrees. Yep. Try drawing a 70-pound bow on that. Right. You know? Right. Well, unless it's a revolt or something. Yeah, exactly. Like that, it, right. It's going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's right. So then they have, so the Sub 1 XR, all the same high end features as the uh, regular Sub 1 X. I think it was XR last year, too, wasn't I it? I believe so. Sub yeah. X. Yep. Um, just some subtle changes. You still the ability to decock it. Um, you know, some high end features on that one. Then they got the Sub 1 Light, which is just basically, basically, you know, you're sacrificing a little bit on the speed. But your the weight reduction is a real big one, which you're going from 7.6 pounds on the mission, the regular one, down to 6.9 yeah. on the, the sub one light. And they're both rolled cock too, so. Yep. But yep. there is, they do have a crank available you can add on. Yep. But I mean, they're not that hard to cock. I mean, they're pretty simple. Uh, the decocking is even the section I mean that bad with the rope it, cock. It's crazy to me that the amount of let off that mission has on their boat. Yeah. I, it, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't get it either. I'm like. I was kind of mind boggled by it. Right. And still offer the high, the good speed the and speed everything. The speed out of it, like yeah. That. Right. Exactly. And the one thing that I like about the, the missions is the ability, they're pressless, meaning like you can, with you know with some help, I'm not saying everybody should do this, but you can back out the limb bolts on this bowl, and if you needed to replace a string, you can kind of do that. Correct. Insider's, yeah. insider's secret on yeah. that one. Yeah, don't – Try not doing that at home unless yeah. you want to bring it back in pieces and have me put it back <laughs> together for you. We've had a few come in. Not not the missions. We've had a few other manufacturers bolts come in. And because they tried to back the limb bolts out? Yeah, I got one downstairs. I, yeah, you don't he do tried that. Bolt, he tried backing them out, and it literally ripped the bolts out of the right Yeah, and, and the mission, they they have it set up where you know what you're doing, kind of yeah. like all this kind of stuff. But, yeah, and uh, most manufacturers' crossbows, you never touch a limb bolt. No. You Absolutely don't. Not. You don't even dare, unless like he's Mike. Unless said. you don't want to lose. Unless you want to lose an eyeball or something like that. Yikes! Yeah, sad day. Sad day. So then, yeah. this one here. I don't know. Did you see this one? The Killer Instinct. No, I haven't seen the that SWAT. new one yet. Zach's gonna roll this one up here really quick. Look at that thing, dude. That is the SWAT that's XP. I like that. And the interesting thing about it, if you look at the picture there. The string is the whole length of the bowl, meaning that. that it cocks all the, all the way to the back. very back of the Under handle. Under everything. Yep. And then on the um, – if Zach, can you go to the fourth picture in where their rail is? I feel like my beard would get caught in that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at their their rail is integrated into the into the, the forehand grip of that oh, bowl. Oh, yeah. So that, that thing was like, – and we did carry some killer instincts. Yeah, we did. We, did. we did sell a few of them last year. And, yeah, I, and they're in that – I guess entry level, you'd say. This obviously looks a little more than entry level. Yeah, well, it's nine ninety nine. I mean, for the pricing, but look at that thing is just crazy looking. It's everyone's jumping on board. I guess like the, the tactical look. To yeah, it, it it looks that pretty. That literally wicked. looks like a um, Caltech shotgun. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. literally a Caltech KSG, yep. <laughs> well, but in crossbow form. Yeah. Well, right? and I was and I was watching. I'm like, how can they make anything smaller than the R26? And yeah. I I can't remember the full length dimensions on this one here, but that thing just looks crazy. It's 27. Small. 27. 27 inches. inches. It looks super narrow as well. And then the cool thing about it is other companies have done this as well, but I like the ability with the rest, the foothold. Flips down yeah, as it right. rests. Down. Yep. So that clears your fingers and everything away from getting ripped off. But the cams, even on that third picture, and look at how close those cams come into the riser. It's got to be six inches. <laughs> it's just crazy. Holy man. Look at that. So that thing is cool. I'm not sure if we're, Eggert's going to bring the Killer Instinct stuff back in I'm again not sure. this year. But that one is one that, that can, I was watching some videos on that one. That one intrigued me. So. It's, it's a good price point crossbow right yeah, there. Yeah, $9.99. Yeah, and their customer service is great to deal with. We had, you know, we had a few issues <laughs> with their killer instincts that were 
I was a user error, but it, I mean, it was a phone call, and I had parts a few days later. So. Right, right. So um, Brad Fuller wants me to say, wants me to smell Mike's beard and give us a description of the smell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna politely pass. We <laughs> come on. All right, yeah. just, just keep, get in there. Come on, get in there. I'm gonna pass. I'll, let me let me let me nut up a little bit, and then maybe I'll do it a little later when it's. That's like the weirdest thing you want to do before smelling something. <laughs> I know, <weird>. right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're gonna have that silent cock wander around. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Fuller, come on, Brad. All right, let's stop talking about uh, crossbows here for a little bit, and let's go. Now, this is you were big. You're I'm, li- I'm excited about this new blind. Uh, we carried this last year. Uh, they completely revamped it. The Zenic. Um, we. Zenic is a – it was a three ninety nine point um, – Same thing this year. Price point for yep. us. S- same thing this year with a <laughs> absolute ton of new features. New uh, new camel pattern this which year. Which is a Dave Smith camel. And, yeah. And for guys that aren't familiar with that name, uh, look up Dave Smith decoys. Uh, easily fin- the, the best decoys on the market, waterfall and turkey. Deer, too. Deer, too, yep. They have, a, they have a really nice deer. But so the reason that we – the reason that when I reached out to Zenic, first of all, the cool thing for us is they're a pro shop only. Correct. They only sell the pro shops. Yep. So you can't go to a box store. Let me just, you know, make sure that they have a change of their ways here. But this – you can only, like, in the area, hopefully you should only be able to find a Zenic blind at the real shop. I believe so, yeah. So yeah. so their window features are the best in the industry. By far. It's a stretch, a four-way stretch fabric on the front of that thing, so you can configure the windows on the front of this blind in any way you can imagine. Yep. And for us here, like in the real shot, we do a lot of media, uh, a lot of filming, and they have tri- tripod ports. They have meaning the leg of the tripod. Even if you're shooting a gun or a crossbow Correct. out of this thing, you know, you, you don't have to worry about that tripod, you know, being all the way in the blind. All the way in the blind or, yeah, you're not taking up space inside the blind with it. Yep. And then they, they r- improved the um, the windows to the back of the blind. They did tons and tons of features to it's this thing. It's almost like t- two blinds in one with the window features. Yep. The front to back. Yep. So I know for a fact we have the Zenix on order. Yes. Yep. So the, those should be, I don't know. Of, we have a bunch of the accessories, too, on order, too. They got little... Screwing accessories for cameras, all cameras, that stuff. and you can also throw those into trees for trail cameras, yep. all that kind of stuff. So the Zenic is one that we've always been a fan of those, and we're super excited that they they made some changes to that stuff. Not like they needed to, but you know the new pa- I love that. It's like a predator pattern. It is, yeah. It's like a it's like a Kuyu cross predator pattern. Yep. So we're that watch for this one. This one should be here and ready to roll, hopefully before turkey season. The hubs, the hub design is really nice too on it. They actually changed a lot looser hub, so it's not as tight, tight. putting it together. Yep. But then they have like cam lock straps inside to yep. tighten everything down. So the thing about it, a lot of these links, we'll drop them in the comments afterwards. So if you ha- are having difficulties finding some of this stuff, we'll throw the links in the comments after uh, after we're done with TRS Live today, and then you can go back. Watch it and then, um, you know, f- f- click on all the links and find out all these awesome products that are, are coming out. Now, the other one that Mike wanted to talk about is we're going to – he wasn't f- so familiar with this blind from Hawk that I found. I think this is a video, Zach, or is it a uh, – this is the tree stand here. Yep, so the uh, – this is the – what did I call it? This is the, the down, down and, and out, out blind. This thing looked just looked crazy to me. They had one that was eight feet long. And it's got magnetic windows. It's got tons of tons of features to it. I have to familiarize myself with this one a lot more. But Hawk is a phenomenal company. Yeah. They, they have tons and tons of accessories. Now, you know, so the blind is pretty cool. They came out with one last year for ATA show or two years ago that I was kind of disappointed that they never released, which this blind almost took. To, it was like a perforated cardboard style blind. Okay. But it was 100% weatherproof and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Super lightweight. And it just folded in like a hexagon on top of it. Okay. And so I think that's what this blind has Same ended premise. up. Yeah. Kind of took that premises for it. So, And then now you found this video just before we started again because I couldn't find it. But this is the tree stand, and then they also have steps from Hawk. Seven pounds on the Seven tree pound stand. With a, with, with a full-size platform, too. I want to say it's 24 by 30 or... 24 by 28 platform and a seven pound stand. How long is this video, Zach? Like two minutes? Two minutes. It's, yeah, yeah, it's like a two minute video. Can you just play it here? That's just kind of interesting here. Hey guys, it's Jacob Myers with the Southern Outdoorsman. We're at the 2020 ATA show and I'm here in the Hawk booth 
with uh, Chris, who we had on last year with the new sticks, uh, kind of going over a new prototype uh, tree stand that they have really dedicated to the mobile hunter, which is something that you know we've all been wanting for a few years and deciding they're actually going to offer this. Uh, so Chris, can you tell us a little bit about this thing uh, when it comes to just really what brought this around? Yeah, well, what brought it around is the fact that we knew we needed to bring a stand to the market that would fit the mobile hunting community and their needs. Um, yep. We wanted to make it as light as possible. Um, and I think we did that. This stand weighs in just over seven pounds. And it's got two bursts of buttons. So you can, no ratchet straps, don't have to worry about loud yep. noise. Um, just hold them tight. You got a three inch foam seat on it. Obviously you can take that on or off. Yep. 26 by 25 foam. Yeah, it's very sizable. It's a very sizable platform. It still has the uh, adjustment for actual leveling of the platform, which is really slick. And the seat too. And the seat as well. And also with the, the actual bracket on the back, you're going to get fantastic traction on here and hopefully be able to get a little bit of offset leveling with this as well. You can um, use it with the cruiser bracket as well. Oh, and you can use, so if you're running and gunning on either public land and you want to have a couple trees already pre-hung, you can use that cruiser strap and be able to kind of do a quick attachment, which is really nice as well. Uh, so that's another really cool offering from Hawk. Again, it's a very sizable platform. And the cool thing is, uh, hopefully this is going to be released kind of ballpark. It'll probably be late July or August. Okay, so it's going to be right before season comes in. Another great thing about it is the price point. Be able to get in a, a, you know, a sub 10 pound, a sub eight pound stand uh, at an extremely affordable price. So, 179, so what we're thinking. 179 oh. MSRP, uh, hopefully it's going to be right around that. Uh, again, ballpark, um, that's going to be fantastic. So you're looking at a sub $200 stand with the full adjustment that you're going to get with some of the other options out there, but at a price point that anybody can afford this. So if you're looking to get into mobile hunting, this might be a really good option for you and actually pair it with the mini sticks uh, that they just came out with, the uh, 20 inch Hawk Helium 6. So uh, Chris, I think y'all knocked this out of the park, man. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. <clears throat> All right. Well, obviously running and gunning style tree stand hunting is, is very popular. Oh, for sure. And so weight is always a big thing. Now, to me, I used to rep for Muddy Outdoors, and that stand that, that you're just looking at right there reminded me of the stand that they had called the Blood Sport. That's correct. And, and I still have that stand. Yeah. It wasn't. It was a little heavier than that stand, but the the two pegs on the the the, uh, the, the riser, rivaling. if you want to say, you know, and the adjustment, the adjustability rise or of the platform and the um, the seat, all that kind of features reminds me of the Blood Sport, and with Hawk being owned or partnering with Muddy, whatever you want to call it, that's why I think you're getting a look at that one. And right. then their stick that they talked about, we don't have to play that video, but then they, their heliums have always been a popular stick. Huge, huge seller for us. Uh, they got a new 20-inch stick now, two-stepper versus a 30-incher. So a little lighter weight, uh, a little more compact. Right. So. Get a partner with that stand very well. And, the, and again, again, Muddy had the uh, the sticks that I love, the pro sticks. They're 20 inches. Yep. Stem to stem, I still have two different sets of those things. I use them religiously during the bow season. Um, so I, I like that that partnering right there. That's great stuff again from Hawk. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's cool. I think we'll sell we'll sell those really well this year. And at that price point for oh, sure. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and I think then, the sticks they said the four packs for MSRP like one thirty nine. So it's the same price as the thirty inches, the three packs. But yep. Um, so <laughs> we, we missed a couple comments here. Uh, Brad said that when he asked me to smell Mike's beard, that was a test, and he said that I passed it, so I'm glad that I passed it. Uh, Eggert is a big fan, even though he doesn't want to be on the show ever. Know, he right? says, how many features are in a ton? How oh. many features are in a ton, huh? Yeah. It's, it depends on the product. Yeah. I mean. it's, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of features right there. <laughs> Brad obviously had to cut out. He said Michelle is yelling at him for watching deer hunting stuff. Brad Fuller, for those who don't know, is the owner of Omega Tackle. Uh, good, good buddy of the real shot. So I'm glad that uh, he's able to watch the show. Thanks, Brad, for tuning in. John Volkman says, Williams is much needed addition to the podcast. <laughs> well, we might have some secrets up our sleeve. We could, yeah. Like you and I are working on here, too. So we're obviously we're expanding podcasts, and maybe Mike and I are going to host a podcast. Or maybe Mike should just own, host his own, and I shouldn't be a part of it either way. So, uh, cool. Well, uh, so let's talk right – well, since Volkman's here, let's just talk right about his broad, broad, broad headline that he reps for his G5. Big fan. I, I like him. I shoot the dead meats. I love him. I'm, uh, I'm excited about this one-piece one they have, the M3. Um, I'm sure it's probably be a little tougher to tune than a, an expandable, which is, you know, pretty standard for any fixed-blade broadhead. But yep. I, like the, I like the idea. I like the design. I, I think it's – 
I mean, it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks. And then they, the the uh, then the other one they came out with. Everybody liked the striker, the three blade version of yeah. the striker with the Lutz German steel, all that awesome advantages. Now they offer the striker and the four blade. And now one that I was kind of disappointed about, but on their website that I couldn't find is you mentioned the dead meat. Well, now they have the mega meat. Yeah. And the mega meat is now. So there's a four blade striker that Zach's showing you right now. Well, the dead meat is an inch and a half cut three blade expandable, which I love. I shot a bunch of deer with that thing this year. Good thing Mike didn't shoot any deer with it this yeah, I guess. year. Still got to the end of the month, bro. Still got the end of the month. But so what they did is they just added length to the blades and made the three blade a uh, inch and a half, a three blade Correct. two inch cut. Yeah. And then I think the Havoc, which is also a popular broadhead from G5, was their two blade version is now it's a bigger cut as well i yes. think they expanded the blade length on that one on the havoc and they made that one bigger maybe john volkman can let me know why they didn't have the mega meat on the website unless yeah. that's t-bones exclusive and that's about it but um then rage is also a real popular big seller through the real shot and rage came out with two different broadheads again this year they came out with the no collar is the popular trend yeah and um, they stayed with the no collar, which is huge. And then they added the uh, Rage Extreme, the Extreme NC. And then the other one they added was the Rage Chisel Tip, was which was popular in yep. the day. And then they made that a no collar um, Extreme style broadhead as well. So you're looking right there. That was the Rage Extreme with the you know the beveled tip. And then there's the the uh, the chisel tip that everybody liked for for when Rage was. Uh, Still super popular. Yeah, there's, 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 we still sell a lot of them. Uh, I'm, if you want to go back to the, uh, the Raven webpage, they got three broadheads out there oh, yeah. as well. Yep, they got they got aluminum, a steel, and a titanium, titanium version that looked pretty cool. Wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. Oh, man. So many cool products. Let me just check Facebook here and see if anybody else had any cool things that they wanted to add. I mean, they launched it at ATA just a bit behind getting final picks on the website. The real shot will have the mega meat, and I'll predict Williams kills it with it in 2020. You know what? I thought Volkman was a friend. I, I, I've known him a long time, too, as well. Yeah, so. he's fighting. He's picking <laughs> fighting words here. Nicholas Knoll is on. What's up, guys? Yeah, so, okay, cool. We're excited about the, the mega meat. And then um, where else are we at here? I mean, sites. HHA came out with the new Tetra series, the Tetra Max. So the Tetra came out a while ago. You can flip that over there right? if I did all your homework for you. Um, but you now the cool thing they, they added this year is the multi-pin. Again, they just changed the pin configuration out of it. Um, and then the, um, a couple of different features to the Tetra. The, the spy, spy Point trail cam system. So they have – everybody is cellular now for the yeah. most part. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what spy point added to the market was a adapter that can fit on most any camera on the market and turn it into a cell cellular. Really? Yep. I didn't see that. I have to look into that. So, uh, Brian actually sent me the link to that one and then Cuddy link. Cry mini. We sold a pile <sighs> of Cuddy links this year. Uh, everybody yeah. loves the Cuddy link. They improved the Cuddy link system. So that's Cuddy back. They had the Cuddy link system. They improved it. What they did is they ha you now have the ability to control the settings on your cameras from your cell phone, Correct. tablet, computer. Yep. Okay. The other thing they did is they now you went from originally it was 16 cameras you can run on one system. One system. Now it's 24. Four. Correct. And then the other thing they did is they made some improvements. So you're it's 50%, um, I think, I what did I write, 50% faster and then you're also going to get 50% 50 more, more images, images per day. day. Yeah. Yep. So the Cuddy Links are still revolutionizing the industry. We love it. I have some Cuddy Links. I know John Volkman is our Cuddy back dealer. If you want to comment on there. But we, we ran that Black Friday deal. Oh, the two packs. Yeah. And they the two pack. You when you purchase the two pack, you get the cell system. Correct. And the cell system came preset up already from. Cutty. You, didn't, yeah. you don't have to do anything. No. I know Eggert runs camera. He's got, he's got cameras. He's got them in like Oklahoma and Kansas. Uh, Kansas and stuff. And yeah, he's getting pictures all the time on his phone and stuff. Yeah. You know, some, sometimes I wonder how we get stuff done here. Right. He's big timing. He's big timing. Um, so one of my favorite things here, again, that uh, I can't wait to get it in my hand is Cobra. 
got back in the release game yep. a couple years ago. I mean, right. they've always been strong in the the game, but they came out with a couple of diff- different releases. A couple years ago, the first one that I really liked was the Switch. Now, yep. this year, they added the Harvester, which is a it's a thumb-activated release. Correct. It's got the, the swivel hole there for your index finger. It's a lot more compact. You can go from shooting it two-fingered to three-fingered to everything like that. I held that one in my hand. I can't wait. That one, I'm going to order one of those here shortly as I get my new bow set up. And then that one is real lightweight. I'm going to try it with the, the wrist strap, though. Are you? I think so. Might be a little easier to draw. I mean, you're, I mean, you're not getting any younger. I, mean. <laughs> I am getting more handsome, though. Yeah. But I'm not sure what <laughs> your each problem his own. is. And so, then, um, so what are you looking at putting for a rest on here? What are you going to put on here? I'm going to put it. I'm going to put. I'm going to put my vapor trail. You're putting back your vapor on trail on there. Yep. Okay. So I already have a vapor trail, and the vapor trail Gen Seven yeah. is what I'm shooting right now. That's a good rest. I liked it a lot. Now vapor trail came out with a new rest this year as well. So they have the the Gen Seven X, X. which uh, allows you to have the draw cord, which is a limb driven rest. So the draw cord can go to the top or, or the, the bottom, bottom limb. Yeah. They added micro adjust to it for windage and elevation and the cool thing that i thought that you know if you didn't have this integrate system here like you had here with the dovetail they added a bubble, bubble level. to it yep that's nice so i like that and then um i didn't see did hamski do anything this year uh no, i'm not sure that. i know they got their trinity series and their hunter hybrid series so i mean if they're, if they're that good already i mean what else can they do to it really can they make it any better i mean i guess <laughs> i guess so obviously, you know these these are just some of the things that we found were cool from ATA yeah, show. Yeah, there year. was a lot of good stuff this year. I mean, you'd some years where you're just it's just kind of blah. And this year seemed like a lot of a lot of real cool stuff. Came right, out and, this and, year. Not, and this obviously is not all of the stuff no, that no, there was just released. That we highlighted that we really wanted to take interest in. So. Anything that we missed that you thought was even more BA? Oof. You had mentioned something from XOP. No, uh, I don't remember. I don't, I've never seen anything from XOP this year. I thought you said they had a new bracket or something for their, their sticks. Oh, yeah, they got a new bracket for their sticks. Are you drunk yet? Yeah, it's, it's, it's early. Christ, you just got here. Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, XOP's got a new bracket system that they can put on your stands uh, to carry their sticks, which are already stackable as it was. Now you just the same setup just attaches to the, the side of the stand itself, which is kind of cool. Oh, okay. So we got some. I'm catching up again on comments here. Chad Bailey says, "Check out the new Scentlock OZ Infuse Bag. Hit at ATA. A uh, big hit at ATA. Game changer in the scent control. Ooh. What was the? Uh, what was that scent control that came out last year? We got it real late in the system. Oh. The cloak, not the cloak. Um, it replaces ozone. Yeah. Help us out. Who's ever watching this? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. Remind me. I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, Eggert says it's it's different from ozone. It's better, like better for your clothing. Correct. Better yeah. for you. Like it's more you, efficient. I think you said. Um, oh, yeah, why am I drawing? Like Wild Game it. Innovations, I think, had I that think bad it, boy. Yep. I know they added to their arsenal with a bag and all that kind of stuff. Um, John Volkman says I nailed it. Uh, the Cuddy Link improvements, remote access, firmware update will be available in late January yeah. for all Cuddy Link. Hey, John, while you're paying attention here, I got a question for you. So. What about people that just purchased the, let's just say, the Generation 1 Cuddy Link stuff? Are there, is that firmware update available for all that kind of stuff to make it remote ac- accessible? That's a great question. Thanks, man. I didn't work hard. Yeah, yeah, I thought you thought of that one. David Michael says, how long until there are some saddle options in the TRS shop? Old concept coming on strong and late. A lot of innovation. So one of the things we did have on this list also was tethered. Tether is one of the big players in the game for saddle, saddle hunting. hunting. Yep. Um, they're so busy. I reached out to them last year, and we tried to get some in the shop. Just couldn't make it work. Couldn't make, couldn't, make, couldn't make it work. Now they came out with the Phantom system, which is a lot more reduced weight and everything on the saddle option. So Tethered is one that we're still working on, trying to get into the shop. The, the thing about it is, like, those guys who run that stuff – the pricing at first was a little higher than what people were comfortable with. Yeah, and like you said it's an it's an old system. I ran a saddle back in the day, a long time ago. Um, 
I was like the old, I guess, lineman saddle. Yeah. And, you know, big bulky leather, yep. huge metal D rings and stuff. Noisy as hell, but we ran it and I killed deer with it. Right. You know. And it, it's and so for those who aren't are familiar with the saddle, I'm not sure if you're living under a rock, but like the saddle <laughs> stuff is is super, super popular because it first of all, it's so lightweight, like the hunting public is a YouTube channel that I watch yeah. religiously. Yep. Those guys use it all the time. Well, it's, it's perfect for that si- that setup in that situation where you don't you you're trying to get in, get out. Yep. You know, less noise and new areas. You're just trying to get in, get out, and be inconspicuous. Well, and and like from what I've seen from those guys, utilize it as they wear it. Yep. And if they don't like the scenario, if there's no good trees, they just hunt with it on yeah. the whole time yep. because it's so it's so minimal on Correct. what you have. It's there's no bulk to it. Yep. You know, even though the hawk system is lightweight and everything like that, you still have to pack a tree stand in. Correct. You know, if you can't, if you, on public lands, you, if you can't leave the stand on there, now yeah. you got to pack everything back right. out. You know, even with the lone wolf custom stuff that came out last year, you're yeah. still bringing a stand in and out. Correct. So with the tethered system or all the saddle systems, you basically just bring in a couple steps. Yeah. And you can get and up you're, as you're high as you can. And as high as you want to go. Correct. Yep. So check that out. So that's a really good question there, Dave. Uh, we're going to try to get that kind of stuff in here, hopefully for 2020. I hope so, yeah. It's just a matter of working out the timing with them and what they can get us. So. Uh, oh, Zero Trace, Eggert said. Okay. We will have the ozone infused from Scentlock also. Well, there Perfect. you go. Good thing Matt's watching. And then for my question that I asked uh, John Volkman about the uh, firmware update. Yes, firmware update will apply and work on all existing previous and new cutty link that's awesome. units that's awesome that's smart it is it is it so it makes it easier for guys that already have the pre-existing stuff that you know may not be completely 100 percent up to date with the new stuff yep so well perfect so i think we're going to kind of wrap up today's episode of trs live here we covered a lot of information remember i'll go back through after the show and drop all the uh the the links and such that we talked about today about the ata show we appreciate everybody that joined in and commented. It. You know, the nice thing about you being here is people are actually very interactive with the show. <laughs> so you did a great job today, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Zach, you did a great job as well. Um, we're going to wrap it up, and uh, you'll see us live next week on TRS Live again, talking about what? I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. we got a week to figure it we out. we got a week to figure it out. So have a great rest of your Tuesday, everybody, uh, and we will see you on the next one. All right.